In this video, I'm gonna share with you what I've learned this week, which is very simple. It's title reveal exactly like this. But to make this a little bit more challenging, we're gonna do it together, step by step, in less than five minutes. So let's start the clock and let's jump in DaVinci Resolve. So here we are in my edit page. I've already got a clip on my timeline. The first things I will want to do is go up and turn my effect library, go into my title, and then I can take the text, the text plus doesn't really matter here uh, for now. Let's drop it here, make it the same length. And here we can have something like, I don't know, um, vlog, vlog season one, episode one, for example. Maybe I can put some space here to get that slightly aesthetic, move things around um, just to make it at, at the right place, increase the size, you kind of got the idea. And then I will want, as the tram go through, to remove that text to get me started into my vlog. Straight away, the first things we can see is that everything is moving on the camera, but not my title. If I want to adjust that, I'll tell you how to do it at the end of the video. But for now, let's work on removing those things. So for that, I'm gonna duplicate this clip. So simply click on it, press option on your keyboard and then drag it up. I'm on Mac, I think the shortcut on Windows is very similar, but here we go. So now I've got it. And obviously because it's layered, now I can't see the text underneath. So the solution would be to bring masks. So let's select a top clip. Let's go into the color page. Um, and then from here, let's make sure we've got the right one, the one at the top here, as we can see. If you don't have those things here, no problem. Timeline, clips, that's really the two one we will want to turn on. And once you've done this, we can very easily um, start applying a mask. So we're gonna come here into the masking region. We're gonna select either uh, a frame and we can then restructure it the way we want. Something like this would work. Um, if, I, if I come here, don't forget to zoom out and kind of keep more of the frame because what we want to do is as we progress we don't want this to stop being masked and then have the text underneath being revealed so let's make sure that when we're here uh, we cover the the entire uh, frame so the text is completely hidden now with that let's come back at the beginning of of the subway let's maybe fix it uh, let's remove the highlights just to get uh, a complete view but here we are and now what we can do is come into the tracker Make sure we put it by frame, which is gonna allow us to create keyframe at any point in time. So if I'm coming um, here, for example, I can now move it forward. And we can see that that keyframe has been created simply because I've got that little white dot. So now moving back, we can see that DaVinci is extrapolating. If the position is not exactly right, we can adjust it. Uh, there's probably a smarter way to do that, but for a quick and dirty, I found it works really well. Um, and then let's not forget to start maybe here. Uh, so let's just put it here. And now we can see that indeed, if I play, I will go with the subway in a more or less convenient fashion. Let's just make sure that we've got the last two frame here. And when we're here, we can just cover everything. Doesn't really matter. Once we've done that, that's pretty much it really. Back into the edit. Now we can validate things. We can see that as I go, um, yeah, nothing's changed. So what I did forgot, back to the color page, that's what happened when we do these lives, is what I want is really to just export this piece. You know, I want to reveal what's underneath. So when I'm here, I want to be able to see what's underneath. And for that, I will need the alpha output, that uh, blue one here. So right click, add an alpha output, then grab the blue, connect it, and we're good to go. Now, if I'm coming back into the edit page, let's maybe remove the highlight we can see that indeed, we've got exactly what we wanted. Now there is a few things we can do to smooth things out. So for example, um, if I'm here on, on that O, it's okay-ish, but it's probably not the best we can get. So we can go back to the color, uh, we can come back to a tracker and we can see here there's a softness. If I increase that softness, uh, we can see it here on the kind of the, the border. It's really gonna make everything a bit smoother. Uh, soften things up in terms of revealing sooner or later. In our case, we're gonna use that to make sure we don't have sharp angle. Um, but with this, we're pretty much good to go. So let's reset to fit. Let's come back at the beginning, let's play. And we can see that, perfect. Now I can add a music, I can cut uh, to the next piece. My vlog can really start. If I want to, I can bring some subway sound. I can put them here. And now if I played from the beginning, we have this. Pretty decent. 
Now, if you want your title to stick in the frame, to be fixed within the perspective and move with everything as if it was part of the scene, we will need to do a bit of adjustment. For that, let me bring this other clip, making sure that we've got something that moves a little bit more. So here we can see the curve really going up and down. And here to adjust things, we could drag a text as we've done before, um, but I couldn't find a way to make that work. So let's scratch that. What I did find that works really well is to select your original clip, right click, go into the Fusion page here. And then from here, we're gonna select this, do Shift Space, uh, bring the, the search tool, and here we're gonna look for the Planet Tracker. Um, this is gonna be quite important because now with this, we will be able to select what is it that we want to track. Now there is multiple way of tracking, uh, multiple things, so play a bit around to find what works well for you. But for me, I found that point and perspective is great. Now, because my runner is going to go across the board, uh, I wanted to make sure to not take something too small, otherwise I'm going to lose my tracking. So what I'm going to do is come here at the beginning and say, OK, I want to track uh, this full region here. Some, something like that. Like That should be big enough that I can walk around things. So I'm going to take the full curb. And here we go. I've got that zone. I've got selection. I'm on my default frame, on my reference frame, which is zero. Perfect. If I wanted to do it earlier, sooner, because I wanted to track maybe my runner, I could do it, then just click on, on set, and then that define your starting point. But for us, that's zero. That works just fine. And from here, we can go and say um, track until the end. So we can see Da Vinci is bringing a lot of points, doing a lot of tracking. And as we can see, Da Vinci is really good at letting the runner go through without impacting the Now that it's done, I can see that all of those tracking points have been here. So I'm pretty good to go. I can now click on my tracking element. I can see creates a planet transform, and that's gonna be key. This contains all of those movements, so I can now apply them to anything new in the field. So I won't need that plane tracker. Let's delete it. Let's select a text. Let's drag and drop it into that lane to make sure that it creates the merge as well. Here we go, and now we need to tweak things a little bit. So what I want is I want the text to go into the planet transform and the transform into the merge. Uh, and if I put a text here, my title goes here. Uh, and then let's maybe bring it into a good position where we can easily track it with our eyes from the curb. We can see that now if I'm playing, my title is moving with the frame, right? Exactly, see here we can see that the title is stuck to the curb so now we're good to go. With this, we've got our first original clip and we can play with, with mask once more like we've done in the, previous, uh, in the previous example. So, and there you have it. Now, like me, you know how to make your title appear or disappear with a moving element in the frame. Now, if you think this is just something for YouTube and small videos, you'd be surprised. I found this to be actually used in the cinema industry. Uh, I was watching Emily in Paris the other day and they use that absolutely everywhere. If you like this video and you want to play more with masking, I've got a video here about how to use masks to change colors of things in the frame. If you just want to play a bit more with visual effect, I've got a video here for green screen. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.